might have seen some Royal Turbo and Delex systems before, but there's one that's so mysterious you've never even heard about it. Because this anti lag system was copied straight from a Russian combat plane, and no one really knows about it. Yet. But I'm not only gonna show you how it works, but also why the Russians never got much credit for inventing it. All this time, not once. Time has come to change this. It was first used on the French Formula One cars in the 1980s. The French copycat JP Booty filed a patent for an air regulating device in 1982. And shortly after, this device was also fitted to the French Group B Rally Monsters. And they needed it badly. Before turbocharging was around, racing engines had a wonderful throttle response. Every little pedal movement got translated into power. Instantly. Almost like a light switch. But the first turbos were as responsive as an elevator button. However, when the turbo engine makes three times the power, you just don't care as much. But to improve throttle response, Formula 1 engineers became very creative. Get that speed! Ferrari even tried to ditch turbochargers altogether in favor of this weird exhaust pressure wave supercharger. Our French copycat JB Booty went a different route. After having a close look at some old World War II airplane engines, he came up with the DPV. The Variable Air Rotation Device. That's not anti-lag. That looks like VDG Dyro. Which has a row. <laughs> yeah. In this video, I'm going to be explaining variable geometry turbochargers. Wrong video, mate. The DPV might look similar to that reliable turbine thing, but it's not even connected to the exhaust side. It sits right in front of the turbo's intake. A look at JP Booty's pattern shows how it is connected to the main throttle with these linkages. Ah, let me get that camera a little bit closer to show you. <laughs> the most important part of the DPV are these vanes that control airflow into the turbo. But for the system to work, the golden and red actuator and the throttle linkage are just as important. We interrupt this program for some breaking news. Maistia's ExoSung research has received huge support. This leaderboard shows the three biggest supporters and one Dornobo was chosen by Chia Lack. The total amount of donations reached almost a staggering $24. ka -ching. That equals an $11.45 paycheck after Gubi took good care of the other 52%. Going by this rate, Exos research can continue as early as 2025. Pardon me, 2205. And now sports. That's why this golden and red actuator are both necessary to make the DPV work. Aqui tinha uma cara que que isso aqui é um é um sistema que alimenta por aqui. Unlike the commonly known anti-lag systems that turn the exhaust manifold into a machine gun, or even the most sophisticated anti-lag systems like this one that turns the turbocharger into a jet engine. The DPV chokes the turbo to make it spin faster. Imagine it a little bit like holding your hand over the suction end of a vacuum cleaner. Okay, just one time. So when the car races down the straight, the DPV practically does nothing. Because at full power, these vanes stay completely open, trying to get out of the way for the incoming air the best they can. But as soon as the driver lifts off the throttle and the boost drops, the DPV curls up like this armored rat. It's important to know that the main throttle is kept halfway open, always. So the engine can keep sucking air out of the entire intake system until there's almost no more air left to suck. Just barely enough to keep the engine alive. I'm like, uh, what? Now you have to understand, these turbochargers at full power spin over 2000 times per second. 
that's so fast that the outer tips of this tiny compressor wheel could raise this fighter jet. If you ever held any of your body parts out of a car window at 100 miles per hour, imagine what it would feel like holding them out of a window of a jet. Air resistance gets so high so quickly that a turbo spinning at full speed loses most of its momentum almost instantly. But if you take the air away, the only thing slowing it down is bearing friction. And that's just not that much. But then the question is, why does the DPV have to be so complicated? Why not just stick a normal throttle in front of the turbocharger and call it a day? Hmm. Engineers at BMW did exactly that. On their infamous turbocharged Formula 1 engine. Mit welchen Leistungen äh, kann man beim Turbomotor rechnen? Beim Qualifizieren 850 bis 870 PS. But JP Booty knew what the Russians discovered decades earlier on their airplane engines. That this is just not good enough. It's very likely that JP Booty read the same paper that you see in front of you now. It was written back in a time when the word Nazi was not primarily used for people that like to stick a needle into your body. What are these? I don't know. You freaking Nazis! Back then, fighter planes were almost always supercharged by a centrifugal compressor, and these engine and supercharger combinations were optimized for a flight height of a couple of thousand of feet. As the air gets thinner, the higher the plane goes, you have to pump it into the engine to make any power at all. But since these superchargers are directly coupled to the engine speed, this created an interesting issue. When the ambient air gets thicker than what the engine was designed for, the supercharger will overboost and kill the engine. Alright, what else did I have to do today? Support. Maestias Exosun Research. I better get home. Now obviously you could use a throttle in front of the supercharger to keep the engines from blowing up. But there's another problem. Superchargers hate being throttled. Throttling makes them work so much harder and the compressed air gets super hot. It's like trying to do a top speed run with an open parachute. It takes a lot more effort to achieve less. This supercharger is optimized for 30,000 feet. At sea level, it's in a world of pain. It's working against such strong throttling losses that it can only produce 68 horsepower. That's a 32% loss in power. I was wondering why didn't they use wastegate control turbochargers, then they wouldn't have these problems. In this video we're going to be talking about how turbocharger wastegates work. Now you might be thinking turbochargers require better materials and higher octane fuel, and that stuff might be hard to get when you're fighting a war against the world. But the truth is, turbochargers just look silly on a fighter plane. <laughs> to maintain a sneak appearance and to keep the engines in one piece, the engineers put clutches and gearboxes on their superchargers to slow them down near sea level. But of course, someone found a simpler way. Russian engineers came up with the throttle that superchargers love, and it's called the Russian Swirl Throttle. But the Russians kept pretty quiet about their invention. The world only got to know about it after German engineers had a closer look at some Russian airplanes they've captured. In the tests they made, they found out that an engine at sea level was able to make 150 horsepower more with the swirl throttle, and potentially even more than that when running higher boost. The swirl throttle enabled the supercharger to run at high efficiency again, without the open parachute. And that's why JP Booty couldn't just use a normal throttle in front of the turbocharger. With the DPV, the swirl effect gets so strong that according to the patent, the turbocharger now gets sucked up to speed. And that's the second reason why the main throttle has to stay always open. With almost no air resistance in the intake and the engine constantly sucking on the compressor wheel, the turbocharger now spins up to 30,000 rpm faster at part throttle than it does at full power. And this gives really good throttle response with almost no lag. 
the dice. DPV. No bag. And no loss of suction. But it's a very fine balance to choke the turbo just enough so it can keep spinning at maximum RPM and letting enough air through for the engine to keep a snappy throttle response. And JP Booty mastered it even without using any electronics. Instead, he came up with this throttle linkage. There are two springs integrated. The one on the left is needed so the movement of the gas pedal is not restricted when the main throttle stops closing halfway. The DPV on the right is also controlled by the gas pedal, but only to a part. It only opens up to around 30 degrees, even at full throttle. Only when the engine starts making boost will the spring inside the golden actuator get compressed by the intake pressure and push the DPV wide open. The system is so efficient that they started to use the same trick on modern turbocharged Formula 1 cars. Time has come to change this. And all that was only possible because JB Booty was able to take this great Russian invention and improve it. Hello? Bonjour, monsieur, my dear. Je suis the inventor of the Pneuretic Grass Spring. JP Booty? Correcto. I based the DPV on the French Shedlovsky brand new supercharger, and that was developed a couple of years before the Russians were full. They copied the French. Hang on a moment. You said it was your idea. <laughs> All right, that was fun. Uh...